Hey everyone, how's it going? Forrest here, again with another installment of my complete analysis of all of JS Box Krell harmonizations. Today we're looking at Singen Viel aus Herzenglun, which translates to Let us sing from the depths of our hearts. This is a fairly interesting Krell. For all intents and purposes, it's pretty harmonically straightforward, um, especially in comparison to yesterday's Krell. If you haven't seen yesterday's Krell, take a look. I suspect that there is something going on that does relate to yesterday's chorale as well, um, and I'll point it out when we get to it, but I think we're just going to hop into the analysis. It's fairly straightforward. Two flats in the key signature. We start on G minor. We end on G major. Um, no tricks here. This is a G minor, and after our tonic triad, we have some passing tones in the bass before we get B flat, D, G, and G. It's G minor in first inversion. We'll just change the figure bass. And then we have uh, three non-chord tones here, a neighbor tone and two passing tones. We have A, D, F sharp, and A. That's D major over A, which is our dominant and second inversion. And I'll mark that because this does feel like a subdivision of the harmonic rhythm. Uh, one wants to go to five, and I think even more specifically, five wants to go to one, G, D, G, and B flat, which is on the other side of this progression. We have C, E flat, G, and A. That's A minor 7 flat 5 over C, 2, 6, 5. D, D, F sharp, and A. That's a 5 chord, but we would expect at the other end of a 2, 6 chord or a 2, 6, 5 chord. And then we have E flat, B flat, G, and G, which is E flat major, making this a deceptive progression. 5 going to 6. And then we have A, A, C and F sharp. Very interesting progression here. This is F sharp diminished over A, which is our seven chord. Um, actually, no, I'm sorry. I was thinking we were going from five to seven here. This is our seven chord in first inversion. This is just a bout of adjacent harmony. Five going to six, going to seven, which we would then expect to go to our tonic, which we do B flat, G, D, and G. This G is also an anticipation and this A is a passing tone, but this chord right here is our tonic triad and first inversion. We then have an interesting chord here. No, am I confusing it? No, the interesting chord is here. We'll get to it. Sorry, I'm just trying to um, uh, locate myself or orient myself on the page. Here we have G, B flat, C, and G, which looks like, let's see, uh, G, B flat, C sharp, and G. Yes, yes, that's right. Um, this F is a non-chord tone, and we have C sharp diminished seventh in second inversion, and it's incomplete. We don't have an E flat anywhere, and this is a secondary dominant. This is the leading tone chord. It's fully diminished in second inversion, and this would be the leading tone of five. Uh, C sharp is the leading tone to D, and D is our dominant, or our five, and that's where we go to in this half cadence, D, F sharp, D, and A, which is our five chord. Uh, which is interesting because this uh, C sharp fully diminished triad, this C sharp feels more like a... It feels kind of like an, um, like, what's the word, like an embellishing tone, because this C sharp is just half step away from making this a tonic triad, right? If this D was held over, it would be a tonic triad, but this C sharp completely changes the identity of the chord, but it functions, because it resolves the way we would expect it to. Okay, looking ahead, we have a perfect authentic cadence, kind of a counterpart to the first phrase. We have D, D, F sharp, and A again, which is our dominant D major. We don't need to write anything. And then we have an anticipation in the melody again. We've seen something similar to this in the first phrase. We have G, D, G, and B flat, which is our tonic triad. And here comes the interesting chord. We have F, D, G, and A. And if you remember yesterday's chorale, um, we talked about in the A section uh, the bass feeling as if it was lagging behind the chord as if the bass was the non-chord tone here. We have F, D, G, and B flat, and I guess we could call that a 4-2 chord, like a 1-4-2 chord, but honestly, I feel like this is such a contrapuntal phrase. We have the melody doing something very active, and then we have rhythmic displacement, a syncopation going on in the alto, and then something more 3-4 uh, 
typical in the tenor, and the bass line is keeping a steady pulse. So every voice is doing something different. Uh, this isn't the only, actually, is this the only measure so far that's done that? Yes, this is the only measure so far that has the voices doing everything completely different. And I feel like what's being implied here is a slurry of chords. We do have a five chord on beat one, and then I feel like the chords being introduced on beat two, then on beat three, even though this F is a passing seventh, I don't feel like this is um, uh, anything other than just a passing tone in the bass. It's still the same chord. Uh, and it resolves somewhere that we would expect it to. We have E natural, C, G, and C. That's C major over E, which is harmonization of the melodic minor scale, which is what we start to get here. But instead of going up to G, we prolong the resolution. Uh, we also have a passing seventh in the tenor. Before we get F sharp, A, A, and C, this is F sharp diminished in root position, 7-7. Seven, seven. Um, Bach avoids doubling the leading tone as he often does. We often double the third. Uh, sometimes we double the fifth, but most of the time it's the third. Um, and then we get D, A, F sharp, and D. We have one of these interesting seven to five progressions. This is what I was thinking was happening here because my six looked kind of like a five. Um, but yeah, seven going to five like I've talked about in the past. Really not a progression. I mean, yes, it's two chords one after the other. So objectively speaking, it is a progression. But in a functionally harmonic context, right? Seven and five have similar functions. They both want to resolve to the tonic. It feels like one is more so delaying the other. Um, and because they're a third apart, the chords are very similar pitch-wise. So you're not really introducing too many more notes into the texture. Um, so that being said, it feels less like a progression and more like a stagnation of the harmony. So less of a progression more of a static series of chords. We then have a G, G, D, and B flat, which is our tonic triad. C, G, E flat, and A. A minor 7 flat, 5 over C. Bach loves 2, 6, 5 chords. And then we have D, F sharp, D, and A, which is our 5 chord, that then goes to G minor. G, B flat, D, and G. Okay, looking ahead, we have a phrase that ends with a perfect authentic cadence in the key of F major. The subtonics are relatively commonplace that Bach modulates to um, in minor keys. So we start off with this G minor chord. I'm going to analyze it as a common chord progression, uh, but you could call this a direct modulation as well. After all, D minor happening after G minor does feel like a purposeful um, juxtaposition because we get D major here and D minor here on the other side of this G minor chord. So direct or common chord, I think they're both logical conclusions. Um, our two chord, which uh, G minor is, sorry, I wrote G again. <laughs> I meant to write F major. Um, G is also our supertonic in the key of F major. We then have D, D, F, and A, like I said, D minor, which is our six chord. Two going to six is what I've been calling a transitive progression. Typically, we expect it the other way around. Um, so here it's going the other way passing tone in the bass, F, D, F, and A. It's D minor in first inversion. We're seeing a similar pattern as we did at the beginning of the chorale here, but much less activity in the upper voices, so no passing five chord or anything. D, D, F, and B flat this time. It's B flat major over D, which is four, six. And then we get A, C, E, and C with a passing tone in the tenor. That's A minor in root position which is our three chord. A bit of a deceptive progression, uh, four, six. Uh, it's kind of a transitive progression as well because four, six is kind of like six because the submediant of the scale is in the bass and um, three wants to typically go to six, but here we have it going the other direction. So Bach is ascending the scale through fifths. We then have uh, D, A, F and C. That's D minor 7 in root position, which is 6, 7. 3 going to 7 is a normal progression like we just talked about. 3 to 6 is a falling fifth. And then we have E, G, G, and B flat. That's E diminished in root position. Bach doubling the third again in the diminished triad. And then we have F, F, A, F, and C. I think we saw this 6, 7, 1 progression as well in the key of G minor. So a little bit of borrowing going on, not exact, but three and five are similar to one another in terms of the notes they contain. Um, they're only one pitch apart, F versus E. Wait, is that right? Three and five? No, A versus G. 
sorry, I just I mixed up the notes that they don't have in common, or that they, yeah, that they don't have in common. But this F major triad, F, A, F, and A is our tonic, our one. And then we get B flat, D, F, and G. That's G minor 7 over B flat, 2, 6, 5. We know that Bach loves those. C, C, E, and G, which is our 5 chord, C major. And then our perfect authentic cadence in, uh, concludes with um, F major, F, A, C, and F, our tonic triad again. Okay, looking ahead, we have a phrase in the key of D minor. It ends with a Picardy third. Interesting. Typically, we don't see that in the middle of a chorale, but it's not unprecedented by any means. Sometimes we do see it. It's just relatively uncommon. But typically, this chord ends up getting recontextualized as the dominant of the tonic key that we're going to end up going to. Apologies for the loud noises, if you can hear it in the background. Um, we have F, A, A, and C again. That's F major, and I think this is our three chord in the key of D major as well. Uh, we have F, B, natural, G, and D, so harmonization of the D melodic minor scale. Um, when paired with the melody, this is what really makes it feel like D major, uh, just ascending in thirds. This is uh, G7 over F, 5, 4, 2. I also think just 5 and calling this F a suspension um, is valid as well or just calling these passing tones and calling this a passing 4-2 chord is fine, but I hear it like a like a chord. Three voices are moving and are being sounded on a beat. That sounds uh, like, a, like a chord to me. And then we have E, C sharp, G, and E, which is C sharp diminished over E, 7-6. Again, Bach doubling the third. I'm pointing that out now, not like this is an interesting motive or anything. It's just a typical good voice leading practice, good voice leading practice that the textbook will teach you when harmonizing chorales in this fashion is that seventh chords typically don't uh, double the leading tone and Bach will I, I haven't uh, particularly been looking for it but the vast majority of cases he does not double the third even in root position spellings or sorry he doesn't double the root even in root position spellings so then we have D D F and F I read that right? Yeah, D, D, F, and F, which is D minor in root position, an interesting double root, double third spelling. G, D, B flat, and E natural. That's E minor 7 flat 5 over G. Bach loves 2, 6, 5 chords. A neighbor tone on the bass. And then we have a typo. This was D flat, but it's now C sharp, which is what it's supposed to be. Uh, G, C sharp, A, and E. I think this A is really our chord tone, because with a 4, 2 chord, like this one, for example, where the F is the seventh of the chord, we expect it to resolve down, and this is part of a continuing motion upwards, which makes me feel like A is the root still. So I'm going to call this a five chord, but I think five, four, two could also be accurate depending on how literal you interpret the chords. We then have B flat, D, F, and D. That's B flat major in root position, which is our sixth chord in the key of D minor, a deceptive progression. We've seen this progression before, two, six, five, five, six, in the first phrase. Um, and then we have uh, G, E natural, B flat, and D. That is E diminished over, sorry, E minor seven flat five over G, another two, six, five chord. So kind of like a cyclical progression, two, six, five, five, six. That could have been a tonic, but it isn't. It was uh, deceptive, um, the B flat, as opposed to the A in the chord. And then we get two, six, five, because six wants to go to two um, via that cycle of falling fifths that I've talked about. Um, and then we have A, E, A, and C sharp, which is our dominant A major, before we get D major, D, F sharp, A, and D, which is our major tonic. And also, like it often functions when we see Picardy thirds in the middle of the chorale, our dominant in the key of G minor, where we will stay for the rest of the chorale. So here we have another cadence, but we... Oh, another cadence where D major is our final chord, but here this is a half cadence, not an authentic cadence in the key of D. And typically, if you're just trying to uh, look at a chorale and look at what uh, what type of cadence it is, if the fifth of the chord is in the melody, um, you can more or less hedge your bets that it'll be a half cadence the vast majority of the time it is, if you're not very quick at audiating what the voices are doing. Um, that's uh, the general roadmap that I use when I'm just doing a like an internal audiated analysis. But after our five chord, we get a bit of an interesting progression, and I think uh, there's some room for debate here. We could say that this is like a deceptive um, 
Well, it is a deceptive progression in the sense that we would expect D to go to 1 here, um, and here it's going to B flat, which is our 3 chord, and I'm convinced that this phrase is in G minor, but I think there's an argument also that we're in the key of B flat, and this is our tonic triad, because we spend two measures really focalizing B flat and F natural, which are two tones that, well, um, one could be a tonic and one could be a dominant, and he spends a really great <laughs> he spends a great deal of time doing it. Um, it, it to me, it just feels like the melody is more uh, G minor, like five four three two three four five four three two, rather than uh, three two one seven one two three two one seven. Um, that's just what it feels like to me. So even though you could analyze this B major or B flat major chord rather as one with a passing tone in the bass. Here I'm analyzing it as 3-6, but you could analyze it as 1-6 uh, with another passing tone. And then B-flat, F, B-flat, and D, which is just taking the chord and putting it in root position again. Um, and then this F major chord, F, A, F, and C, is our 7 chord, or 5 of 3, depending on how you look at it, with passing tones in the upper voices, so the... Um, bass foreshadows the melody, and the melody is doubled um, in thirds with the alto. We have more passing tones going on, and then we get F, E flat, A, and C, which we call this a 7. We can call this 5 and 7 before we eventually modulate to the key of uh, G minor. But I feel like, you know, it, it's not uncommon for Bach to spend lengths of time focusing on the relative major even when he is in a minor key. Um, in this case, I feel like both analyses are accurate. I'm not 100% sure. I think I'm more so on the side of uh, team G minor, but uh, if you're on team B flat major, I think both are equal candidates there. It's a, it's a fair fight between the two of them. But afterwards, we get some chromatic ascending going on here, and when we see chromaticism, um, in this ascending, or I guess descending as well, it wouldn't matter which direction. When we see chromaticism, a stepwise chromaticism, the uh, um, chord progressions tend to err less on the functional side. It's more so uh, harmonizing the uh, motion rather than trying to uh, fit a clear linear harmonic narrative as you would you would find when using diatonic pitches so in this case f sharp d a and d is our five chord in first inversion d7 or sorry d major over f sharp and then we get d d f sharp and c which is taking our d major chord putting it in root position and adding the seventh i was looking at this c while i was talking about this so i said d7 this is d7 without the a actually so the f sharp gets replaced um by the alto because it's lost in the bass because it goes down to D and then C is stepping down in the melody so incomplete seven chord but still all the contextual tones are intact and then we have G D G and B flat which is our tonic triad root position G minor before we go to D major D D F sharp and A which is our tonic uh, sorry which is our dominant triad I did that confusing it with the last phrase it is now our dominant um, looking ahead, we have another phrase in G minor. This one, I don't really think there's any debate. We are in G minor. Um, and this is, sorry, I wrote a perfect authentic cadence because, that, goodness, I am off my game today. This is it, another half cadence. Uh, we have B flat, D, G, and D, which is G minor. So in comparison to the first phrase where we get B flat, now we get uh, G minor, spelled even with the B flat in the bass. Um, so we actually get the resolution we expect. We then have F sharp, A, A, and D. It's D major over F sharp, 5, 6. And then we get G, B flat, B flat, and D, which is our tonic triad and root position, G minor. And then here we have an interesting phrase. So my argument is that we have A, C, A, and C. Well, that's not an argument. That's just objective fact. So the one thing I've determined is that this G and this D, those are both passing tones. There's no chord that's really happening that's analyzable on beat 2. On beat one, literally what we have is A and C, which would be implying a two chord because A would be our root and C would be our um, 
third. But I think if we look at the big picture here, what's really happening is we have A, C, F sharp, and E. And what's really happening is that this is implying a 7-6 chord, uh, F sharp diminished in first inversion without the root. Um, and the reason why is because there's really not a lot of motion going on. The um, We mostly have chord, I mean, yes, two of the voices are moving by step, but we have A going down to A, the same pitch, C going to C, we have another A here that goes down to F sharp and C going up to E flat, and this uh, A sharp fully diminished in first inversion, which would be uh, 7, 6, 5, fully diminished. Um, what would the... Let's see, which one would be sharp? Hold on, I'm trying to figure out the figure base real quick before we talk about it. So in root position, so no, it's in first inversion. So A to F is the six, uh, and that would be raised. So it'd be six sharp. Um, if that's incorrect, feel free to correct me in the comments for those of you who are um, figure based pros. It's never been my strongest suit, but uh, thankfully in the video, I can talk through my process rather than needing to have 100% um, accurate uh, nomenclature on the page. But I feel like really what's going on here is a big uh, diminished chord. Um, of course, you could analyze this, this as 2 going to 7. My principle is that 2 going to 7, usually when we see them, they're happening over a subdivision of the harmonic rhythm because it's a relatively weak progression in the same way that 5 going to 7 or 7 going to 5 is a weak progression. They don't have the same function. One of them is predominant and one is dominant. But because 2 and 7 share um, two of two-thirds of their pitch content in common with one another, um, out of all of the predominant dominant chord progressions, it's objectively the weakest because it doesn't have the same, um, it doesn't introduce the same number of chords, uh, the same number of tones into the texture permutation wise. Every other permutation of uh, 2, 4, and 5, and 7, when you pair 2 and 4 with either 5 or 7, um, every other combination introduces at least two new tones into the texture, which makes the progression feel much less stagnant. Um, and two going to seven kind of, it's, it's, in, it's interesting because it is a predominant to dominant progression, but it also stagnates because the tone that's getting introduced is the leading tone, but that's the only voice that gets introduced. So I feel like it's a relatively weak progression, and there's always something that derails the literal um, progression of two going to seven. In this case, it's because there's no E flat in this chord. We have A, C, A, and C. If there was an E flat in this chord, my hypothesis about two going to seven being a progression that we seldom see in Bach over the um, harmonic rhythm, it w would be not entirely derailed, but it would be weakened, that's for sure. But every time we see two going to seven, it's over a single beat. So like with eighth notes or there's some type of concession in the chord and in this case we don't know if this chord this chord is not complete in a diminished triad we expect the e flat or an e natural in this case because we could harmonize the melodic minor scale but we don't have anything here i think this is the most interesting uh, phrase in the entire chorale and we get it again later we'll talk about it then as well not in as much length but we get b flat b flat g and d Right before our cadence, that's G minor over B flat. That's our tonic in first inversion. Um, I was calling those passing tones. Now, I think there's a chord going on here. We have a B flat, A, F sharp, and C. Oh, no, these are passing tones. Uh, we can see that there's like a passing seven chord here, but over this B flat, not 100% sure how accurate it would be to say or put it on the page as, well, this is a seven chord. With that B flat, it would be like a... An inverted suspension going on. I think there's a name for that. It's not just called an inverted suspension. I have to look that up. But there is a seven chord connecting these chords here before we get C, G, G, and B flat. Another very interesting chord. Yesterday we were seeing C sharp seven chords without the third abound. Like pretty much every time a C sharp seven chord came up in the chorale, and there were a handful, there were like five or so, they were always spelled C sharp C sharp, G sharp, and B. And here we get a C minor 7 chord, right? C, G, G, and B flat, uh, 4, 7. 
without the E-flat. I think that's an interesting coincidence, the fact that the corrals are adjacent to one another and um, are missing in that spelling. So very, un uh, very, very uh, unusual. Maybe it's just a coincidence. It probably is just a coincidence, but um, definitely a coincidence that raises my eyebrows. Um, so our half cadence, of course, we get D, D, F sharp, and A. And it's interesting to get a four chord not in first inversion. We have C going to D. If this was an E flat, and then another voice was C for whatever reason. Um, oh, I see why I couldn't... No, oh, no, it could be C. No reason why it couldn't be C. I thought we were in the key of D minor for a second, for, uh, forgetting that we have moved to G major, or sorry, G minor. Um, but yeah, we typically don't see 4 go to 5 in root position in cadential situations. Most of the time it's down by half step, so that's interesting. But looking towards our last phrase, we end with a perfect authentic cadence in G minor. Um, and it's a fairly straightforward phrase. We have D, D, F sharp, and A again. Uh, kind of similar to what's going on from our first phrase going to our second phrase. Uh, so it's another 5 chord, C, uh, D, G, oh, this G is in anticipation, this B flat's in anticipation. We have a D, G, and B flat. Ah, yeah, we have the same progression again that's happening similarly here. I don't think this uh, this C is a passing tone. I had to come back to this chord to look at what it was. Also, this A is a non-chord tone. Forgot to mark that. Um, but here, we have a G minor chord happening. And it feels like this is the real trajectory. It happens right here, but because the voices are... We basically have one unified voice here. They're doing the same thing, but literally the same thing. And then we have two voices that are unique. Um, it feels like the C is a passing tone, or an accented non-chord tone, that then leads to our destination, which is happening here. And after seeing this progression again, where the seventh of the chord was not in the bass, um, that made me feel like this F was more incidental, and it's less of a seventh and more of just a passing tone. Yes, objectively speaking, it is a passing seventh, but it's serving the same role that this C is right here. Um, but yes, this F is a non-chord tone. It's like a neighboring seventh, a very short one. This A is a non-chord tone, but yeah, I think G minor over B flat is what's being implied here. And then we get another A, C, A, and A. Here we have G, so it could be like a root position 2-7 chord, um, but I really do think what's happening here is uh, we're getting some type of 7-7 uh, seven, seven chord, or sorry, not 7-7 seven, seven chord. I think we're getting a 7 chord in first inversion rather than a 2 chord because we don't have the E flat in the chord. The E flat happens on the next beat, and then we have G, E flat. Uh, F sharp and C, where I think this F sharp is actually an accented non chord tone, and we actually have C minor over G, which is interesting. This is a 4 6 4 chord, a passing 6 4 chord, which is totally fine. And 7 going to 4 is a transitive progression. It's not where we would expect the chord to go, but the bass resolves the way we would expect it to. It's just the voices over the bass uh, spell C minor rather than G minor. So, they, uh, so C minor and G minor share that G which is what's deceiving us in the bass, because the other voices are spelling another chord. But after our 4-6-4 four, four chord, we get F-sharp, D, A, and D, which is D major in first inversion. That's our 5 chord, uh, D major. Uh, and then we have G, D, G, and B-flat, which is our tonic triad and root position. So lots of these cyclical progressions where Bach takes us somewhere we don't expect, and then that chord turns into the new... Uh, springboard in the direction towards the tonic. We've seen a lot of these delayed um, uh, resolutions here, where the resolution is sometimes delayed as long as three or four beats. But yes, we have C, E flat, G, and A. It's A minor 7 flat 5 over C. Bach loves 2, 6, 5 chords. D, D, F sharp, and A. It's D major in root position, which is our 5 chord. Passing 7th in the tenor before we get G, B, natural, D, and G. Bach often ends his minor chorales with the Picardy third. I imagine it's because he wanted to end the uh, piece on an uplifting note because the chorale is often the last movement, but that's just speculation. I just imagine, you know, trying to think like a composer um, and what, you know, why one would end on it with the Picardy third. It also feels a little bit more, I don't know, major chords I think have a little bit more 
maybe it's just subjective, but there is like a finality to major chords and like the there's the general sound quality of the chord. But that is uh, another video. Um, that is uh, today's video. I hope you uh, enjoyed the analysis. I enjoyed the analysis. Definitely some interesting things here. Whether or not we're in B flat, uh, this sort of two slash seven chord, what's going on. Um, and just interesting chords throughout. Lots of uh, modulation as well. We go to D minor, we go to F major, possibly B flat. Uh, so a good harmonic spread, but mostly functional harmony with a couple of twists and turns here and there. If you're interested in following me along on the journey to analyze the cross, uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification icon. Uh, you'll be notified of when my daily video goes live. And if you want your daily dose of Bach, your daily fix of analysis you'll get both of those satisfied here on my channel and i would love to have you along for the journey so on that note thank you so much for watching the video and thank you so much for supporting the channel by doing so i look forward to tomorrow's analysis and i hope you take care